All right, so today I'm going to be going over uh, Python Jinja 2 uh, server-side template injection. So it's going to be based on the information from uh, this website, uh, this one, and this one on, on security. OK, so let's get started, right? So, so what is Jinja server-side uh, template injection? So first off, uh, let's go to our website that we have running here. Uh, one, two, seven, right? So we have a website here and uh, it just basically gives you a prompt. And in, in this case, for this website, uh, in the back end, it's using uh, Jinja templates. And basically if you give it a variable, so in this case, if it's the variable C and you set it to a name such as Dave, right? It says, welcome Dave. So the, the idea behind templates here is that basically all you have to do is set a variable and then the template will be uh, smart enough where it will just uh, add in the, the variable into the actual presented uh, HTML itself. So th that's templates in a nutshell. So the issue here is that, okay, instead of Dave, if I instead put something like uh, do, 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 do. So this is the syntax for uh, templates in, in Jinja. It's, it's this uh, curly brace, curly brace. So if, if you put these curly braces, then it will interpret what's in there as, as sort of Python code. That, that's basically what, what it boils down to, right? So in this case, if I do curly braces, curly braces, and I do Dave again, right? Uh, so in this case, Dave was interpreted as a variable, I believe. And because that variable wasn't defined, you don't get anything here. So let's do something a little more interesting, right? So instead we'll do seven times seven. So, so, so right, right. If it was just a literal string, then this would have just showed, so check it out. If it was a little literal string, seven times seven here, you, you would get seven times seven. But because we put it into this context of these uh, curly braces, it gets executed into in, in terms of a Python context. So now we have the equivalent of, let's see here, I believe it's this, yeah. So right here, basically, we're giving the equivalent of seven times seven of, of executing within a, a Python a command interpreter. So that's what we have, right? So I guess just, just really quickly here, and we, we're not gonna let Nathan, because Nathan kind of already knows, knows this, but uh, based on what we have here, say our goal is to get a code execution. How could we potentially go about that with the fact that we have uh, a, Py, uh, a Python context here? And just sort of have, give you a little more clue of what we're dealing with here, right? So within the Python context here, say if I do like a string here, like FFO, and then, uh, basically, I run the uh, method upper on it. So basically, this right here, FFO, because I put it in double quotes, that is a string object. And then I could run a method on it. So the, uh, the string object, the string class has a method upper. So if I run this guy right here, right, I'll get this string all uppercase. So basically, we have the equivalent of, you know, running in this Python context. So, so really quickly, uh, do you guys have any ideas of like, okay, this is what we have. How do we go about potentially using what we have here to get command execution? So we could potentially put it in a reverse shell inside of that uh, execution of potential Python code. Yes, yes. So, so that, that's our goal, but how do we go about doing that, right? So, you know, it, because we're in Python, if we were in Bash, then we could just do netcat, right? But because we're, we're in Python, netcat isn't available, right? So let, let's, let's like, be, before doing a full, so yeah, say our goal is a full reverse shell, ways of doing that is we can do netcat, but let's just try to do the ID command, right? So, so for testing purposes, how, how do we go about doing the equivalent of the ID command here uh, with, with just a, a Python context? We first need to have access to a module that yeah. we can execute OS level commands with. Exactly. Yeah. So that that that's exactly what, what we have to do. We we need to do modules. And in this case, in Python, uh, what we can do here is we can do its uh, method resolution with all the different objects to eventually get to a place where we get the OS module, and then we could run 
uh, uh, other objects and classes under the OS module so we can get the equivalent of command execution. So, so that's what we're gonna do, right? So for instance, as, as I, I shared initially, right? So uh, yeah, so let's just kind of, okay, yeah. So let's, 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 let's do it from right. So first we have this and what this is, is foo is a string. And so from foo, we can sort of use the different uh, methods and objects within it, right? To sort of move to a place where we have conventionally get to a place where we can get that, uh, that, that uh, OS module, right? Th that's basically what we're trying to do here. And so, so we're moving up and then, so up here is subclasses, uh, da -dum, da -dum, right here, right? So these are all the different subclasses and the one we're interested in, so let me move this up a little bit here. The one we're interested in is uh, the warning uh, method. So let's hear, yeah, 203 method subclasses. It, okay, so anywho, the, the class that we're interested in is this 203 one. And for whatever reason, that one was out. But, but anywho, if, if we go through all that event, basically that uh, 203 is this uh, warning uh, warning class. And what that warning class does is it imports the, the sys. And from sys, we can get all, all, all the way to uh, running our uh, ls command. But in this case, let's do the id command. And let's just go and just go ahead and, and, and do the whole thing, right? So here we have that. And so, so we put the objects here, boom. So we have a command execution, right? So uh, that's the vulnerability in, in a nutshell. And I think the last thing I wanted to show with that is basically uh, the source code uh, for, for this application. So here's the here's source code, right? So uh, it's very simple. And, and if you're familiar with uh, cross-site scripting, it's very similar. So basically it's, it's, we have the ability of the, the program gets user input and because it doesn't escape it or it uses this user input in, in a manner where that user input will be interpreted as uh, control characters, right? That's how we're able to escape just like regular user input and then get it to be executed in a Python context. So basically that, that's what it does. That's what's happening here in, in a nutshell. So uh, that was um, server-side uh, template injection uh, with uh, server-side uh, template injection uh, with, with, with uh, Jinja 2 in a nutshell. So uh, really cool. neat stuff. Yeah. Yeah. All right, with that, I will...